So now we are moving to the next question that is question number 76. So question number 76 is on your screen. The addition of catalyst during a chemical reaction alters which of the following quantities? So it's a very simple question. Now we move into the solution part. So what they do in catalyst is always affect the activation energy part. Okay, it will not affect any concentration or something, it only affect on the activation energy where it is low down or fast down. So, it it's completely depends on the catalyst. So, catalyst affect on the activation energy. So, if you see the option number 4 where activation energy is mentioned it out and this is the correct answer of your question number 76. So, basically it is given in the chemical kinetics part of your class 12 NCERT. So now we are moving to the another question that is question number 77. So question number 77 is on your screen. The ionic radius of A plus and B minus ions are 0 0.98 into 10 to the minus 10 meter and 1.81 into 10 to the minus 10 meter. The coordination number of each ion in AB is. So this question is come from the solid state of your class 12 NCERT. So now we are moving to the solution part. Okay. So for this you have to calculate the radius ratio. Okay. Radius ratio we have to find it out. So how to, how to find it out? Your A plus radii that is cationic radius divided by your anionic radius. So if you see here whatever ionic radius A plus value they are given 0 0.98 into 10 to the power minus 10 divided by if you see the anionic radius that is given as 1.81 1.81 into 10 to the power minus 10 meter. Now if you are solving this part it will be coming around 0 0.541 it is approximately okay. So, just calculate it. Now, if you see if your radius ratio value will coming from 0 0.43 to 0 0.7 around then their coordination number is 6. This part we already studied in the solid state part. Okay. So, here see 0 0.54 approximately it coming means it is come under this position. So, as a result the coordination number should be 6. So, if you see the option, option number 1, the coordination number 6 is the correct answer of your question number 77. So, question number 78 is on your screen. So, which is the correct statement for the given assets? So, now we are moving to the solution part. So, if you see they given here as your phosphonic acid and another one is phosphonic acid. Okay. So, what is the structure of phosphenic acid? This is nothing but this is H3PO2. And what is the structure of phosphenic acid? Phosphonic acid, sorry, this is the H3PO3. Now, how is the structure? Is like that P double bond O here, here one H is here, one H is here, and another OH will be here. So, see. P, O2 and H3. Okay. But here if you see it is look like the structure P double bond O here and here one more hydrogen sorry it should be an O3. So, here one hydrogen here OH and here OH will be there. So, now see 1, 2, 3, 3 hydrogen H3, 1 P and 3 oxygen. So, 3 oxygen. So, okay. So, this is the structure of your phosphenic acid and this is the structure of your phosphonic acid. Now, this tripotic and monopotic what are those? So, just simply you remember when this hydrogen we can remove, which hydrogen? The hydrogen which is attached with this oxygen. Based on that we are saying that monopotic, tripotic or dipotic. See, here only one hydrogen we can remove it. So, this is a monoprotic. Okay. But here if you see this hydrogen, two hydrogen, this one and this one we can remove it. So, this is your diprotic. Why di? Because two hydrogen we can remove it. 
Now, if you see the phosphonic phosphenic acid is a diprotic acid, no, it is a monoprotic acid. So, option number 1 we can neglect it out. Option number 2, if you see phosphenic acid is a monoprotic acid, yes, that is true. While phosphonic acid is a diprotic acid, yeah, that is also true. So, here they ask about the correct statement. So, option number 2 is the correct answer of your question number 78. So, now we are moving to the next question that is question number 79. So, question number 79 is on your screen. So, fog is a colloidal solution of. So, this question basically comes from your surface chemistry part of your class 12 NCERT. So, what is the answer for this? It is a very simple question. So, fog is nothing but it is a liquid in a gas. Okay. So, option number 1 is the correct answer of your question number 79 and it is come from the surface chemistry part of your class 12 NCERT. So, now we are moving to the next question that is question number 80. So, question number 80 is on your screen. So, which of the following statement about the composition of vapor over an ideal 1 is to 1 molar mixture of benzene and toluene is correct? Assuming that temperature is constant at 25 degree Celsius, given pressure pressure data at 25 degree Celsius, benzene equal to 12.8 kilo Pascal and toluene is 3.85 kilo Pascal. So, now we are moving to the solution part. So, if you see for this we have to use this formula that is P naught benzene is equal to sorry this is P benzene equal to P naught benzene and chi benzene. So, this is nothing but this is your mole fraction. So, what is the value for P naught benzene they are giving us 12.5 kilo Pascal. So, 12.5 into how to calculate the mole fraction they given the molar ratio that is 1 is to 1. So, 1 divided by 2. So, if you solve this one, so it is coming as 6.25 approximately okay? that is for benzene. Now, similarly if I calculate for toluene, If I calculate for toluene P, P toluene is equal to P naught toluene into mole fraction of toluene. So, what is the P naught toluene? It is 3, 3.85, 3.85 divided by again mole fraction is half. So, it is coming as 1.5. 9 something okay 1.9 so just do the calculation so this value is coming approximately 1.9 something and this value is coming as 6.25 now if you see this partial pressure of benzene that is the vapor pressure not not partial pressure that is the vapor pressure of your benzene will be more of your vapor pressure of your Toluene. So, what it conclude that the concentration or the percentage of benzene is more in the vapor. So, if you see the vapor will contain higher percentage of benzene, yes, this is the correct option. The vapor of contain a higher percentage of toluene, no, this is not because higher concentration is your benzene. The vapor will contain equal amounts, no this is not possible, not enough information, no. So, option number 1 is the correct answer of your question number 80. So, how it will find out? We already call that here first of all we have to find out the benzene pressure that is is coming as 6.25 nearly. Then again we have to calculate for the pressure for toluene, it is coming as 1.9. Finally, we found out that pressure of benzene will be more as compared to your toluene and pressure concentration of benzene is more it means the percentage of benzene is more in the vapor. So, the option number 1 is the correct answer of your question number 80. So, question number 81 is on your screen. 
the current statement regarding the comparison of the staggered and eclipse confirmation of ethan is so this question is come from your hydrocarbon chapter of your class 11 ncert so now we are moving to the solution part so if you see they ask about the staggered and the eclipse one so first let's see methane structure that is ch3 and ch3 so, if I draw the eclipse from how it look, it will be look like this. I mean, so, this is your eclipse form, this is eclipse and how is the staggered form? So, this is staggered form and always remember your staggered conformation will be more stable of your eclipse conformation. Now, see what are the options, see the staggered conformation of ethane is less stable, no I already mentioned the staggered is more stable. So, option number 1 is not correct the eclipse conformation of ethane is more stable no eclipse is not more stable so option number 2 we can neglect it now option number 3 if you see the eclipse conformation of ethane is more stable than your staggered conformation no eclipse is not more stable than your staggered conformation so option number 3 we can neglect it out so option number 4 if you see the staggered conformation of ethane staggered conformation of ethane is more stable yes that's true because i already told your staggered conformation will more stable than eclipse then eclipse conformation because staggered conformation has a no torsional state so this is your correct answer of your question number 81 so question number 4 is the correct answer of 81 question so now we are moving to the next question that is question number 82. So question number 82 is on your screen. The reaction they given one reaction and they ask can be classified as means that reaction which is represent of for the following options. So now we are moving to the solution part. So if you see this question that is this question or this reaction is nothing but this is your Williamson synthesis. So, let us see the option where they are given this Williamson synthesis part. So, if you see the first option only Williamson ether synthesis, Williamson ether synthesis is the correct answer of this question. Now, we are moving to the next question. So, question number 83 is on your screen. The product formed by the reaction of an aldehyde with a primary amine is. So, this question is come from the nitrogen containing compound of your class 12 NCRT. So, now we are moving to the solution part. So, they asked about aldehyde, aldehyde react with primary amine. So, let us draw the structure aldehyde. So, this is aldehyde and it is react with a primary amine. So, it is look like this R N H 2. So, this is a primary amine. Now, when they are react, so by removal of water molecule, so what you are getting? You are get like this C double bond N H R. Okay, so sorry this should be n r. So, this is nothing but this is nothing but this is your skiff base. Okay. So, if you see in the option, option number 1, so how is the correct answer of this question number 83. Now, 
I just show you here the C double bond O here and if I draw like this like H N H R sorry this should be H 2 N R okay. just for the, this R water molecule are removed from here and you are get like C double bond N R and this is nothing but this is your skip phase. So, option number 1 is the correct answer of your question number 83. So, now we are moving to the next question that is question number 84. So, question number 84 is on your screen. So, which of the following biphenyl is optically active and this question is asked from your stereochemistry part of your class 11 and CERT. So, now move into the solution part. So, if you see they are told about the biphenyl compounds here all are biphenyls, but if you see the option number 2 this biphenyl the rotation around this single bond is restricted. sorry rotation absent why because of this bulky groups in biphenyl compounds what will happen that one ring on one plane and another ring on is an another plane means the structure is look like this ok. So, here what will happen this rotation around this single bond is restricted and restriction region is because of this bulky groups. So, when rotation is absent this compound is optically active and when optically active the non superimposable mirror image is possible. So, if you see option number 2 is the correct answer of your question number 80. So, question number 85 is on your screen. So, for the following reactions the given reaction reaction A, B and C. So, which of the following statement is correct. So, now we moving to the solution part. So, if you see the option sorry the question A here what happened from hello alkenes you are getting a alkene groups. What will happen here? So, here basically your elimination reaction take place. So, this is nothing but this is your elimination process. Now, if you see in option B, here this bromine is replaced by OH. So, this reaction is for substitution reactions. Now, if you see this one here in the double bond this bromine will add it. So, this is the example of addition reaction. So, your A is elimination, B is substitution and C is your addition. So, now see what are the options they are mentioned. So, if you see in this questions A and B are elimination, no only A is your elimination reaction. B is the substitution reaction this is not possible. Now, he is in option 2 A is elimination yeah that is true we already said B is substitution yes that is true and C is your addition reaction yes that is true means option number 2 is the correct answer of your question number 85. Now, if you see option number 3 also A is elimination no, B and C are substitution no B is your substitution reaction and C is your addition reaction. So, option 3 also neglected A is substitution ok B and C are addition reaction no addition reaction only your option C. So, option number 4 also we can cancel it out. So, option number 2 is the correct answer of your question number 85. So, question number 86 is on your screen at 100 degree Celsius the vapor pressure of a solution of 6.5 gram of solute in 100 gram water is 732 mm. If K B is equal to 0 0.52 the boiling point of this solution will be. So, this question is come from the solution chapter of your class 12 NCERT. So, now we are moving to the solution part. 
So, for this whatever values they are given here the value they are given as uh, vapor pressure that is 6.5 gram means W A they are given as 6 point sorry this is W B that is moles of solute is given as 6.5 gram and W A that is a solvent they are given as 100 gram. K V value they are given as 0 0.52 and here they are given as solute pressure as 732 mm and what is the P note that is for partial vapor pressure of water is as 76, 760 mm. So, now we are using this formula that is P note minus P s divided by P note and equal to N 2 by N 1. Okay. So, N 2 is nothing but moles of solute. So, first we have to find out the moles of solute. Okay, P naught is equal to 760 minus 732 divided by 760 and equal to N 2 value we have to find it out. What is the moles of solvent that is 100 gram that is the given weight divided by molecular weight that is 18. Now, if you calculate this one it is coming as 28 by 760 and this 18 will be go above 18 N 2 by 100. Now, if you calculate this one N 2 is equal to 28 into 100 divided by 760 into 18. Now, if you do the solving part of this, so you will obtain your answer as 0. 204 okay so this is the moles okay so this is the value of n2 so remember n2 we are obtaining here as 0 0.204 mole now we move on to the remaining parts so they ask and one more formula we know delta T B equal to K B into molality and what is the K V value is given as 0 0.52. How to find out this molality? Molality is nothing but your N 2 into W A sorry into 1000 divided by W A into gram. So, 0 0.52 into what is the value of N 2 we are getting 0 0.204 0 0.204 into 1000 write it here see 0 0.52 into N 2 value is 0 0.204 into 1000 divided by what is the value of W A it is again 100. Now, if you solve this one, it is coming as 1.36 approximately. Okay. Approximately, it is coming as 1.36. So, consider here only 1. Now, what is the boiling point here? So, 100 degree Celsius plus 1. So, your answer is coming as 101 degree Celsius. Now, if you see in the option, option number 1 is the correct answer of your question number 86. So, question number 87 is on your screen. The correct statement regarding RNA and DNA respectively is. So, this question is basically come from the biomolecules part of your CAS 12 NCERT. So, now we are moving to the solution part. So, if you see they ask about the RNA and DNA. Okay. So, now see the statement the sugar component of RNA is arabinose no it is a ribose sugar in RNA. So, this is not the correct statement. So, they ask about the correct statement. Okay. So, this is wrong statement. Now, option number 2 if you see the sugar component of RNA is ribose yes and sugar component of DNA is 2 deoxyribose. So, this is the correct statement. 
if you see the remaining statement also the sugar component of RS no RNA sugar component is not RA, R aminos it is a ribose. So, option number 3 also we can neglect it. Option number 4 if you see the sugar component of RNA is 2 dash D oxyribose no this is for DNA not for RNA. So, option number 2 is the correct answer of your question number 87. So, this is the direct statement from the biomolecule chapter. So, now we are moving to the next question that is question number 88. So, question number 88 is in your skin. The correct statement regarding the basicity of aryl amide is. So, this question is come from the nitrogen containing compound of your class 12 NCRT. So, now we are moving to the solution part. So, if you see they asked about the aryl amides basically. So, how is the aryl amide look like? So, this is your aryl amide and this lone pairs and this lone pairs is undergo delocalization. So, it this lone pairs are not easily available. So, this is not a good basic. Okay, why? Because this lone pairs are undergo delocalization. Now, see the statements. Aryl amines are generally less basic than alkyl amines because the nitrogen lone pairs electrons are delocalized by the interaction with the aromatic ring pi electron system. I already mentioned that this lone pairs is not easily available because they undergo delocalization. Due to delocalization, this lone pairs are not easily available and they are not easily available. So, this is not a good basic as compared to your alkyl amine. So, option number 1 is the correct statement of your question number 88. Now, see the remaining options whatever they are mentioning. Aryl amines are generally more basic. No, that is not possible. Aryl amines are not more basic. Aryl amines are generally more basic. No, this is not a more basic. Aryl amines are generally more basic. No, this is not a sorry. So, option number 1 is the correct statement of the question number 88. So, now we are moving to the next question that is question number 89. So, question number 89 is on your screen. Which one given below is a non reducing cigar? Again, this question is come from your biomolecule chapter of your class 12 NCRT and it is a very simple. The option, option number 4 is sucrose. So, sucrose is a non reducing sugar. So, option number 4 is the correct answer of your question number 89 and it is a direct statement or direct concept from your NCERT chapter is biomolecule for your class 12. Now, we are moving to the last question that is question number 90. So, question number 90 is on your screen. The pair of electron in the given curved anion is present in which of the following orbitals. So, this is a very common question and it is a very basic question. So, now we are moving to the solution part. So, in case of carbanion, this carb is carbanion is sp orbitals ok and how to find it out we already mentioned into the theoretical part. So, this carbon is sp. So, if you see the orbitals, the orbital is sp that is option number 4 is the correct answer of your question number 90. So, it is a very question no concept just to know how to find out the orbitals and by finding the orbitals you will end up the answer that is question number 90 the option is 4. So, my dear students today's class we solve lots of PYQ questions and we try to solve the chemistry what are the concepts they are using to solve this PYQ questions. So, next class we are try to solve more and more questions. So, till then keep learning and keep revising. Specialized epidermal cells surrounding the GERD cells are called complementary cells or subsidiary cells or bulliform cells or lanty cells. Well, in the chapter transport of plants and in also chapter anatomy of the flowering plants we have